Hey friends, welcome to Old Fashioned On Purpose, the show where we look at what modernity has taken away from us as individuals and how we can get the good pieces back. So most often in this show, I talk about how we can weave the best of the old with the best of modern life and kind of create this alchemy of old and new. Now, it's no secret that I probably live more in the modern world than the old fashioned world, right? I, I drive cars, we have a house with electricity and running water. And so I'm living very much a modern existence, but weaving those old fashioned skills in when they suit us and our goals. But all that said, I have always been fascinated by the idea of going completely off grid um, and being completely free of any sort of modern grid system. And over the years, I've had a couple of different guests uh, on who we who have shared some of their strategies for going off grid, and we've talked about how they do all the things. And I thought it was time to have another conversation around this topic, because frankly, I find it really interesting. And even if I never plan to go fully off grid, I always think there's something we can learn from those who have gone all in, if you will. So when today's guest sent me an email, I knew I wanted to have her on and have a conversation. So I am so excited to be joined by Risa today. She is... Uh, raising her son in a tiny off-grid home. She has done all the things. She has some awesome perspectives, and I cannot wait for this conversation today. So welcome, Risa. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Jill. Yes, I'm, I'm super excited for this. It's definitely out of my normal wheelhouse of things that I am well-versed in. So I guess just to kick us off, can you give us a little background about what inspired you to live this sort of lifestyle, this kind of off-grid tiny home? You're doing all, all the things at once. I think that people aspire to, you know, they are pinning stuff on their Pinterest boards, watching the videos on the internet, but you're doing it all at once. So what prompted you into this lifestyle? Yeah, great question. Well, when I was a toddler, my dad built an off-grid, uh, straw bill house. And it was definitely not a cabin. It was a house. So it was so cool. I just, I got to be a part of every part of it. Um, and all of his systems were just incredible. And this was, you know, over 20 years ago. So it was just really cool the ways that he, he found to create, you know, running water and the kind of toilet that he used and the solar. And he had a, he had a greenhouse like attached to it. So that is what really inspired me. I always knew that I wanted to do that one day. Yeah. Awesome. And so have you, so you've lived this way as a child and then it just made sense to roll into it as an adult then? Well, I didn't live with him full time. So uh, my parents shared custody. So when I was with him, we did live like that for, yeah. It was, uh, I would go there for a couple of months at a time. He was in another state. I see. Um, yeah. Awesome. So tell me about the, the, what do you call your house now? Is it a cabin? Is it a tiny house? What do you like to refer to it as? It says cabin. It's small. It's very small. It's about 500 square feet, including the upstairs. So it's definitely not technically a tiny house, um, but it is pretty small. So, yeah. Okay. And then tell us, kind of walk us through the process. I mean, I, I want to know all the things because I think like so many of us, even myself have, you know, looked at those videos that you see or whatever and been like, oh, that's how it seems so romantic. It seems so perfect. You get rid of all your stuff. You move into a tiny home. You're off grid. It's so simple. Kind of, I, I'd like to hear the pieces of the, <laughs> of the process that are true to that perception and maybe the pieces that aren't so true. And so give us all <laughs> of the, the details starting from like, well, how did you, you get it? Where, when did you start the build? Kind of, how did you set that process up? Absolutely. So I was just determined to do something. So basically, I'm on my parents' property. We have 150 acres. We have 26 farm animals. And uh, when I came back with my son, I came back to live on the farm. I just knew I wanted to have my little home. So uh, my grandpa had left me and my mom a very, very small inheritance. Um, and I took it and I basically bought an Amish built shed. Technically, mm. um, I shopped around because I didn't want to settle for something that actually looked like a shed. And I was able to find this beautiful, it's a cabin. I mean, it has um, like a steep roof. There's an upstairs, um, has real stairs. It's honestly so beautiful. I'm so glad that I didn't settle. So I got that. I basically wanted to build something, but I was a single mom with a newborn baby and <clears throat> I didn't have a ton of help. And I knew that if I wanted to put something up, I had to probably get something pre-made. So 
it was a shell. It was not finished at all on the inside. So I basically just started getting to work um, slowly piecemeal, you know, insulation here, drywall here, very thrifty. I had no money, no income, uh, a very, very small income, actually. And I just kind of, you know, thrifted Facebook Marketplace. I was buying used drywall, <laughs> like, nice. you know, and so, um, you know, if you're not going, if you're going into it, expecting it to be rustic and, um, you know, nitty gritty, like having to really get your hands dirty, it's an amazing experience. I've loved every minute of it. Um, so yeah, so I basically used Pinterest, YouTube, mostly Pinterest, to be honest. I'm a Pinterest girl. I love it. Um, podcasts just to figure out how to make it work because I kept seeing these tiny houses or these off grid houses and these homesteads. And a lot of them were looked really expensive, to be honest. They look like, okay, a nature's head composting toilet's like two grand, you know, and, um, you know, to set up a running water and the solar setup going into a good solar setup. It's like $6,000, you know, I'm like, there's no way, but there's once in a while I would see a, a video or a post and people were doing like this low tech, um, DIY affordable off grid solutions. So that's what I really set to work trying to figure out. Yes. Yes. So is this a shed, the, the shell that you purchased, is it available in your local area? Is it something you had shipped in? Uh, it was about like an hour and a half away. Uh, they included the delivery and the fee. So it was a total of like $16,000 plus okay. delivery, yeah. which I mean, the whole outside was finished. It had the windows in, the doors in, the ceiling had the double or whatever that insulation, that tinfoil insulation and the floor was insulated. So I made sure to have all that taken care of so that all I would have to do is finish out the inside. I mean, that seems pretty reasonable. Um, I've, we've yes. priced out tiny houses in the past. We, we thought about putting one on our property as like a place for people to stay. And some right. of them are like $100,000. So I they're know. finished, right? But I'm like, ah, you could build like an almost a real house for yeah. a good portion of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, they're really supposed to be like in the, I don't know, when they first came onto the scene, I feel like it was more like $30,000 in DIY. And now you see them for almost like $200,000. And it's just like the yes. purpose, I think. Absolutely. Is yours on wheels? I'm assuming it's not like it's stationary. No, like again, it's not really a tiny house. Um, it's not on a trailer. Tiny houses have to be road worthy. This is somehow you can drive it on the road, I guess. On it's on skids. Um, okay. so yeah, so no, it's on skids on a gravel pad. Got it. Okay. That's just helping. I'm just building my mental image. Yeah. I should have I should have looked at some pictures before we jumped on, but I'll I'll have my image and then I'll go, I can go look at your blog, yeah. which will uh, give everybody links to all of this here in a minute because Risa has some awesome resources and a blog post with all of this information in it. So if you guys are wanting to get into the details. So, um, okay, so uh, so many questions. How, like you said you were looking at Pinterest. Like I love Pinterest too. I love DIY. Although my husband, I, I will admit, he does a lot of that. But there's times when I, you know, what painting and decorating is one thing, but like electrical and sheetrock, like how did you learn to do that? Did you lean on your family members? How did that look? Yeah. So when I going back to the low tech, um, off grid solutions. So I did have somebody wire the walls for electric. However, I'm not using it. This is just purely for in the future. If mm -hmm. I choose to, you know, hook it up to something. Um, the only reason I had them, I had a friend do it is because I didn't want to, have to tear out all my walls. If I, in the future wanted to hook up even to just a solar setup. So it is wired, but it's not necessarily like I didn't need to do that. So what I use um, for my electric is I have these Lucy lights. You can see they're the lights up there. Those mm -hmm. are, they're Lucy lights. They come, you buy them and it's, um has like a little circular port with the solar panel and you can just charge them in the sun or you can plug them into your car, plug them into an outlet, charge them up and they cast a beautiful light they have three settings so that's my lighting i have two downstairs one upstairs i have another um pendant light that i got on amazon and it's like 30 bucks and it has its own little solar panel so i just threw that up you know okay. so um, like on your roof <clears throat> like it goes up, it's just on, on the outer wall okay. you just drill a hole in your house <laughs> scary Sound and no, you just no, yeah <laughs> and you just like feed the 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 little cable through and then you just mount it right on the wall. Okay. Yeah, super, That's super awesome. simple. 
So sheetrocking, yes. I basically, when I started this project, I didn't even know how to use a power tool. And um, I had been previously with somebody who was a contractor and I had it in my head that like, oh, I'm, I don't know how to like drill a hole in the wall, you know? And I was like, no, I can figure it out. So I learned, it's not hard to learn how to use power tools. Just want to be safe. Um, and then I had some friends come and help me sheetrock the first section. And after that, I was like, oh, I can do that. You know, insulating, sheetrocking, it's tedious and you have to have like a steady hand and be good at measuring. And but other than that, it's really not rocket science. So it's just intimidating when you've never done yes. it before. Yes. <clears throat> I love the can-do attitude. You're a woman after my own heart like that's i'm like let's just it can't be that hard i'm gonna yeah. finish. so yeah well awesome. and you know somebody had said like recommended that i don't attempt tiling myself and um ultimately i ended up doing it myself and i'm so glad that i did because i learned that i can tile things and it the way i did it is exactly how i wanted it and i don't know if somebody else could have done it the way that I wanted it. So I'm so glad that I, I took on something that even an, a contractor was telling me that I shouldn't try to take on myself. Yeah. That's what it takes sometimes is just, mm -hmm. yeah, just going. Um, okay. Back to these lights. I'm intrigued by them. Is it Lucy L U C Y? It's L U C I L U C I. Okay. Very, yes. very cool. And um, then what, also, oh, ha, sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to also just say, so for the electric, I did just get uh, for my birthday a Jackery um, power station. So that's another source of power that I use. It's a uh, 500 watt. So it's more, it's kind of in the middle of price range. You can get one for as low as like $200 and still charge your laptop and phones and stuff like that. Or you can get like a $2,000 one and, you know, have a fridge, TV, blender, like all that. Um, so mine is more in the medium. I could use a blender if I wanted or a space heater, but it wouldn't really be worth it. So I use that to charge my laptop, my phone. Sometimes I use it to charge like a little other battery port that I have. I have lots of different methods of harvesting <laughs> electricity, just mostly for my lights. And I have a little portable DVD player. But other than that, that's all I really need for electric. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. So charging yeah. and lights. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm assuming your heat is wood. Yeah. So I have a wood stove and sorry, just to kind of really quickly add this in here. Um, just to be clear, I am on my parents' property, so I have access to the main house where I can get my water from and I can, um, yeah, mostly do that. So I just want to be clear. Like, I know some people might think like, oh, well, she has, you know, she has access to certain things like that's not doesn't really work for us. So I just wanted to add that in there that I understand that not everybody has uh, that opportunity. So, but yes, I have sure, a yeah. great wood stove. Okay. Um, I think, I think I appreciate that caveat, but I think it's important that you're still like, I think so often in the homesteading world, we get so stuck on all or nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's almost like we get into the extremes and it has to be all in or it doesn't count. And I, I mean, you're still doing, you're doing a lot more than I am in terms of being off grid for <laughs> sure. And it's okay if everyone's situation is different. So I just yeah. want to encourage anyone listening, your situation won't look like Reese's, your situation won't look like mine and vice versa, but there's always going to be something you can do, um, even in degrees. So let's talk about water because that's a big one that I've always mm -hmm. been concerned about when it comes to off grid yeah. uh, stuff. What does that look like for you? I love it. Okay, this is probably my favorite off grid feature um, in this cabin is my water system. So, like I said, I go down to my parents and I fill five gallon containers with water from their spigot. They have well water. Um, I just have two, so I usually only fill one a day. That way, I'm not having to lug extra water. I also have the, I do have the hall water for the goats and the livestock guardian. Um, but so anyways, so I just bring up one of those and that way I always have one when one's empty. So my system, I got on a Pinterest pin. It was like somebody in doing the van life. They were living in their van and this is how a lot of them do it. And man, I went back and forth trying to figure out like, do I want a hand pump system? Do I want to get one of those battery operated things that you press a button? Because I wasn't about to, you know, like I said, I wasn't going to try to have like an electronically powered running water. That just wasn't, you know. So what I do is I have a little foot pump and I got it on Amazon. I got so much stuff on Amazon. And 
it's just this little rubber thing and it attaches to tubing and the tubing is fed one part of it is fed into the five gallon water bucket and then the other part is fed up and it attaches to my faucet which i made out of a copper pipe and basically when you pump the foot pump it siphons the water out of the bucket up and then out through the faucet and i just love it because it's hands-free and it's so it just almost feels like a real sink you know it's only one temperature but um it's running water and then that drains i I got like an rv sink drain and it just drains into a five gallon bucket and then i dispose of the bucket since i use everything natural i can use it in my garden you know i can use it pretty much for anything um it is gray water so it's you know kind of you know it's got like food bits and stuff in sure it. But that is my water system. And in the summer, I did receive from a great friend a 275-gallon um, food-grade water tank that's attached to a utility trailer with a hose. So I can actually take that down to my parents, fill it up, and then bring it up here. And I can have way more water up here for a longer period of time. I can use it to water the animals, the garden. I can drink it. Um, for something that size... I would, uh, I'm going to be putting some, maybe like some food grade uh, H2O2 in it just a little bit, just to keep it from getting, um, yeah. yeah, gross. The algae, <laughs> you, what, I don't know what water does, but it, yeah, it gets weird. Yeah, especially <laughs> when it's in the yeah. sun. I I will say I use a clear buck containers. I have yet to have any weird funkiness happening in my water. I think because they just get switched out so quickly and I do rinse them out and stuff. So yeah, so that is my water system. And then do you have like an outdoor shower? How does that work for for that? So for now, I've been showering at my parents. I do have a little setup. We host, we're wolf hosts on our farm. So we have all these little like setups throughout the property that are kind of like this. Um, so we actually have solar shower bags and we have an outdoor shower that we made for the woofers down at the house. So I'm plan to do that this summer, just have a spot out in the woods. And basically these bags, you just fill them with water and then you leave them out in the sun and they get warm. Um, or you could heat up water and fill it in and then you just hang it up and it comes out of a little shower spigot. So I plan when I have the space, I do plan to put a little addition on this cabin. I plan to get either a, um, a, uh, a stock tank or a clawfoot tub mm -hmm. and I plan to just set it up with like a hose. I'd, like I'm some, somehow I think I can attach a hose to the drain and then I'm going to put one of those shower bags above it and then use that as like an indoor shower and then it'll drain out the hose. So that's a plan. I haven't tried that, but I have a strong feeling that it's going to work out great. That's a cool so, idea. Yeah. And I, I know we're, you, we're not going to share your, your exact location, but like you live in a place with winters, right? I mean, yeah. you have, you have winter. Yes. You're not in tropical. Right. Yeah, no, okay. we get winter. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so, yeah, I've, I've always thought about the outdoor showers because I've seen off grid places with them, but I'm like, how does that work? It probably doesn't work year round real well. Probably it's a summer thing. I imagine. Right. So I like your addition idea. Okay. So the million dollar question, because I have actually been looking at these a lot lately. Do you have a composting toilet? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? Yes, I do. So it is a DIY composting toilet. Um, love composting toilet. Uh, I read most of the human or handbook and I got a lot of my inspiration from that, although I don't use every technique. Um, so my composting toilet, again, DIY compost toilets are very, very similar to the ones on the market. It's just um, they have less gadgets. So mine, I, my mom found this beautiful wooden box on the side of the road. It had a hinged top. And um, so I took that. I was like, this is going to be perfect for a composting toilet. So what I did is I, I have a five gallon bucket and then I line it with compostable bags that are six gallons just so that they can fold over. And um, just a note, you want to get compostable, not biodegradable because mm -hmm. the biodegradable is not as compostable. So anyway, so I got that and then I got a pea diverter, which basically it separates the pea and puts it into its own receptacle. Um, and so that attaches to the bucket and then it drains into, I could not find the right container forever. Um, it's important to have something that holds like a decent amount 
because otherwise you're gonna be dumping that thing all the time. Yeah. I ended up going to Walmart and I found like a cat litter container and I just emptied it and it's the perfect size and perfect fit. So I cut a little hole in it so it could drain right into that. And then, um, so the way it works is solids go into the bucket, liquids go into the container. Every time you go number two, you dump um, like a scoop of cedar shavings. It's like animal bedding you can get at Tractor Supply. And you want to make sure you fully cover everything. And with that system, it's virtually no smell. Uh, It's amazing because everything stays dry. Uh, Anyway, so then what I do is I um, take the the solids with the shavings uh, and you can use toilet paper because that composts. Oh, okay. Um, Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So then I put it, I have a compost bin that I made out of pallets and then you just want to continue adding organic material. It needs light and sun. And what happens is after about two years, roughly it should get um, hot enough to kill almost all of the pathogens. So that can then be used. I would not use it on my garden because I'm not that hardcore. But yeah, sure. in other countries, people do it. Some people in this country do it. Humanure handbook guy, all his gardens are humanure. Um, I think it's better to just use it on the trees. You know, at least this way, um, you're not contaminating the earth. Uh, so I also have another thing. It's called a kaibo. So this is just for guests or if people feel shy about being in such a small space and using the bathroom. They can go to the Kaibo, which looks kind of like an outhouse. That's also in my blog post. Instead of going into the ground, like into a hole in the ground, it actually piles up. So it's a high up off the ground. So it's kind of hard to explain. It's like a you walk you walk up into stairs and then you go in and then it it goes, it kind of drops onto the ground and then you cover that with um, cedar shavings and like dry leaves, stuff like that. And then once it gets full, you shovel it out, put that in the compost bin and then that also. So it's the same system. So instead of an outhouse where it's just going into a hole and you're burying it and it's not getting any oxygen, um, when you do that, it just, it it becomes waste because it's um, anaerobic. So it's actually not great for the environment but when you compost it it actually becomes fertilizer so that's why this was an idea that my mom found at a farm in vermont called farm and wilderness and we have two of them on the property now that's awesome i have not seen that i'm gonna have to go i'm looking forward to digging into your blog post so also i just have to say your house is super cute. Like it, it lo- it's like adorable. As I, I get to Thank see it when you, you moved, uh, moved away, it's adorable. So Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, I, w- I was going to say it doesn't look off grid, but that's like, it's not looking off grid isn't bad. It just looks like, a, I mean, I don't know if that's, I don't want to be that to be an insult, but it looks like, it looks just cute and adorable. <laughs> so Well, that is like, one of my yeah. favorite things to show people is that just because you're the low tech DIY off grid, it doesn't have to look like that. It can be beautiful, just like what you see on Pinterest. And that's where I get all my inspiration. So when you walk in here, it really looks just like pretty normal, like a normal house. And that was like what I really wanted. I didn't want to feel like I was just in this, you know, camping hut, you know, (laughs) which is awesome. But that's just not my style. So. Right. And that's kind of been my thing, because I've seen off grid done a lot of ways and the part that's, I mean, again, nothing against camping and nothing against anyone who wants to live like it's full on subsistence, like, you know, toughing yeah. it out. But I'm like, at some point, I think I, at least I, I need to not have everything be so difficult all the time. Like it's like it's camping 24 seven, like, you, like even you're, you're explaining your sink and you're talking about, um, you know, you're, you're being creative. You're not using near as much water as someone like I would use. You're being extremely thrifty and wise. But it still has the convenience of like, you're not lugging five gallon buckets on the porch doing your dishes, like camping. Right. I think that's really important for the longevity of a lifestyle Mm -hmm. like this. Absolutely. Um, Yes. Agreed. Yeah. So kudos. That's that's so cool. It's so cool. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Okay. Thank you for the toilet conversation because I have, so um, I haven't talked about this on the podcast a lot. We, uh, and I don't want to share a lot of details yet because I'm just not ready to, but we are looking at creating some little like off grid type cabins for, for guests and people at some point mm-hmm. on a certain property. And we're looking, my husband and I have been looking at all the options. And that was the first thing I started researching was the composting toilets. And I'm like, is this, is this weird? Like, or would guests feel like that's awkward or like, you know, so I've been trying to balance all that out. So your ideas are very helpful. 
Thank you. Yeah, I think, again, if you just make it look really beautiful and just do a nice job. Um, I lived in a yurt that had the same situation and um, we ended up, you know, helping the property owner. He had it on Airbnb and we had people from New York City and just, you know, like stuff like that. And they were fine with it. It's just all about presentation and also efficiency. It has to be efficient. I'm so glad you said that because I do think that's <laughs> such a big deal in all of this, right? In yes. all of this, it's like, even just in regular old on grid homesteading, there's so mm-hmm. many times where I've started something I'm, and the first two weeks, I'm like, this is so cool. This is so fun. And then the, after the first month, you're like, um, this isn't going to work long term. And it's just finding yes. those pieces of efficiency and systems mm-hmm. that just make sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, Refrigeration. I'm really curious about that as well. How do you handle that? So again, super simple. Um, Out that door, there's a cooler. So I can literally open the door and just like squat down and I have my cooler right there. Um, It is a really good quality. It's like a $300 cooler. Um, So if you figure that versus a $1,000 propane refrigerator, Again, it's a low tech uh, DIY solution. So in the winter and all throughout, even right now, it's like 50 degrees. My food is cold out there. So it's all good. And what's awesome about the cooler is if you leave it outside, it will actually, unless it's like zero degrees for a week (laughs) or maybe four days, it will keep it also from freezing. So I love that. And then in the summer, um, I basically use and have been using, I'm kind of transitioning now into this. I didn't want to do ice because I don't like the idea of everything, like water being in there. That's what everyone does. And I don't like that. I just was like, there's got to be another way. And the ice packs don't seem to work very well. So my friend had a really good idea to just take like a old, like apple cider vinegar container, like a gallon and just fill it with water and freeze it. So. For people who don't have access to someone's freezer, you've got to use ice or, yeah, that's pretty much all you can do is buy ice. Um, But if you do have access to like a friend's freezer or family members or whatever, just switch them out. I always have two and you can switch them out. And I found that at least in like the 50 to 60 degree weather, they last a few days as opposed to like one day. Um, Because even with a really expensive fancy cooler, it doesn't, I haven't found that it keeps things cold for a week. You know, it says it, but. No, yeah. not when it's hot. Yeah. You want to keep it out of the sun. Uh, that's huge. But yeah, so that's what I do. Um, and it's honestly worked really well, especially in the winter. Yes. Okay. That's awesome. Um, how about cooking? Are you, do you have a propane like burners or wood heat or like a wood cook stove? So cooking, um, I love this. I'm actually a little sad. I'm so excited that it's coming towards spring, but I'm a little sad that I won't be able to use my wood stove as much or like at all. Um, I use my wood stove for all my cooking. It has a huge surface. I can have like four different things on there at once. I had no idea how easy and great it was to cook on a wood stove. I even bake stuff on it in my Dutch oven. Like I love it. Yes, like it's bread? amazing. Can you do that? Okay. I did bread once. I will say I made the mistake of letting it rise in the Dutch oven, which I'm such a noob. I'm really not very good at that. So I think if I hadn't done it, it would have been better. But yes, it did work. Um, what's cool is when you're using a Dutch oven or baking something, I saw this on Pinterest. You take mason jar rings. And if you're worried that it's going to start burning, you Put the mason jar rings on it and put it on the mason jar ring so it's not directly on the heat but it's still getting the heat i have found that that works really well um stuff Smart. still can burn a little bit but i mean in the middle of winter it could be like 18 degrees outside i i let my wood stove go out at night um it'll be pretty cold in the morning and within like 20 minutes i have boiling water ready for coffee on a cold stove that's awesome so if you yeah, start I mean, a fire that's... it's amazing that's not yeah. much different than like being on grid. And I mean, that's pretty impressive. I, know. Yeah. I was so surprised, yeah. honestly. I just, when the power would go out at our house, at my parents' house, like we have um, a wood stove there and no one's cooking for themselves. And I'm like, I'm going to just try it. And I tried it and I'm like, oh, we can do this. So that, so then I do also have, I haven't used it yet. Um, um, in my count, my kitchen counter, I have a propane two burner stove top. Now I, had originally bought a different brand, but I found that it was really cheaply made and the the reviews were not good. So I bought a different one. Um, but the problem is now I have to 
make the hole bigger. It's a whole thing. So I haven't been able to use it yet, but it's an Impava two burner propane stove. I used the same brand when I was living in an off grid uh, yurt. It was amazing. You just have to use a match if you don't have electric um, to start the spark, start the fire. So that um, I have a little hole in my house again. So another hole in my house. And basically the burner connects to a regulator, which is fed out of the house. And you can just buy those like 25 gallon, you know, propane containers from a grill. Use that. Mm, okay. So again, low tech off grid. Um, I will say that you have to convert it. So most of them are set to gas. So you have to convert it um, to propane. So you need to make sure that you're getting one that says LPG convertible. And I just wouldn't recommend doing it yourself unless you have knowledge, you know, sure. about things like that. So that's going to be in the summer. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. You mind if I ask what brand of wood stove you have? Because I know that's really tricky to get. Probably one that fits and also doesn't run you out of the house because it's like too hot in the winter. It's huge. It's set for like 2,000 square feet, just so you, if you want Oh, so you that. have a full size. You have like huge. a big, big stove. Okay. Yes. <laughs> would it have it anyway? Okay. No, honestly, it was free from my friend. So I was like, oh, this is meant for a 2,000 square foot um, structure. Well, it works for me too, honestly. It should be fine. <laughs> it's okay. Honestly, I like it better because I have a huge hook surface and it heats the whole place up really quickly. And um, it's rare that I get like, you know, too hot. And if it gets too hot, I just open all the windows. It, okay not you know and it's like okay fresh air you know what i like about the bigger wood stoves too is you can actually pack more wood in there um you don't have to cut the wood to fit oh my gosh i already have to cut wood for kindling like i don't want to yes. have to cut it to fit the wood stove that would get old really quick so unless you have like a 150 square foot house like i don't know i like the big wood stove i'm sold um the brand okay. is i forget it is uh, Lexington Forge. The Lexington Forge. It's old. Yeah. And the old ones are good often. I did have, I did purchase all new piping and everything like that. That's really important when you have it. And it was installed professionally. Um, again, that was That's an key. area I just didn't want to risk. Yeah, I think there's definitely, I mean, I love DIY, but there's always a few areas. Where I'm like, you know what? This has, yeah. if I'm, if we mess this up, this has big consequences. So it's, it's okay yes. to pay for some of those things with the people who know what they're yeah. doing for sure. Absolutely. Um, I've seen over the years, little, we have like a, a wood stove. We heat with that here mm -hmm. primarily. And then like, like I've seen and had companies reach out with like the cute little wood stoves. And I like, I'm so drawn to them. But like you said, my husband's always like, you know how tiny the wood's going to have to be? And do you know how often we're going to have to fill that thing up? <laughs> So I'm like, eh, okay, fine. Not um, worth but, it. You could get like yeah, a smaller one, like a little yodel, you know, and they're still, you can still fit a full piece of wood. You just, you know, not quite as much, you know, but yes. the teeny little like ones that are set on their little like table and the, I see those and I'm like, hmm. No. Yeah. <laughs> not practical. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. So we've covered, we've covered plumbing and refrigeration and cooking and heat. Um, is there any other infrastructure I've missed? No, I, I don't think so. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We, I think I'm trying, I'm going through the yeah house pictures of the house. <laughs> okay. Um, what's, what would you say is the hardest part of being off grid? Is there anything you like you miss? Um, I, I think, you know, once I get into doing showers and stuff here more, um, it would be nice to be able to like just easily take a shower here. Um, there's a little bit more work done. You know, I have to dump things every few days. Sure. I have to dump. I mean, compost. You already dump compost. You know, but then you got the gray water. You got to dump in the toilet. You know, um, filling. So there's just like a little more work that goes into it. And I do know, like, I'm part time at my parents. Um, mostly just because you know love them got my son it's good for him we're right like, here um so i find that whenever i go to my parents i end up getting really lazy and i'm just like oh and i like sleep in and all that and then when i'm here i'm like ready i'm just going you know and i i don't know it's almost like better for me to have a little bit more extra work but i will say that sometimes you know it's just like one more thing to do and that can be 
frustrating sometimes. Sure, but absolutely. Not terrible. Yeah. And I like you, it's interesting you you mentioned like it's so easy to get out of the routine. And it well, you know, either way, we can get used to almost anything. So it's easy, I think, when you just realize, you know, these extra tasks are just life and I'm just doing them, you can get used to that. And then as soon as they go away, you can get used to, like you said, kind of lounging around. Yeah. And um, so it's funny how our human brains work with that. I will say it's so satisfying whenever something's dumped or something's filled. I can't explain it. It's like a dopamine hit. I'm like, ah, yep. okay. That's set now, you know? I get it. I totally get it. Um, I guess let's let's talk a little bit. I don't know if this probably doesn't change a whole lot, but just like in terms of like gardening or you have, I know you have goats. Do you have chickens too? No chickens. I want to have okay. chickens. Um, but yeah. we're right now, we just have the, the goats, and the okay. Great Pyrenees. So here. there, and you, no garden or do your parents have a garden or do you have a garden? So there? no, I do have a garden. I haven't gotten okay. to use it. Um, last year I, I'm kind of recently in here. Um, I actually started staying up here last July. So I had like a, my, I have my patio. I made it out of rocks and it's like this cool, like we had a lot of rocks in the property. So on that, I have, a, you know, a little garden that I did like flowers and herbs and stuff more just like for looks. Um, but before winter hit, I just set up a nice, you know, two ra double raised bed. I just used some old logs or they're actually kind of new. So I used these big logs and I filled it. We have horses on the property. So we just use their like composted uh, manure and like uh, their hay, the decomposed. And I just set it all up because I was like, I know that in the spring I'm going to be like chomping at the bit to get my garden in. So, um, the, yeah, that's why it's going to be good to have the 200 and I think it's 275 or 250 gallon water container. Um, but if it's anything like last year, I will not have to water it that much. Yeah. And that's because I guess that would be really the only consideration of yeah. of gardening or animal husbandry off grid is just the water, which it sounds like you've already yeah. addressed. So it's pretty okay. easy, you know, with the two. So we have that boy goats are up here. Um, there are intact males and they're so sweet. And then we have Storm, the livestock guardian. He is their guardian. He lives there with the goats. Um, and then down at my parents, we have the mamas and all the babies. We just had, you know, like four babies this spring. So, um, so yeah, with the two boys, they just got their bachelor proud over there. They don't need like a whole lot, you know, got the hay bale down here. I just give that to them. I fill up their water and um, give them fermented alfalfa. Storm gets his meat popsicle every couple of days. He gets a giant thing of frozen meat and dog food. So yeah, it's not like, I don't know. It's not that different. It's not that different, honestly. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it is too much. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I know you mentioned you have a son. What is it like mm -hmm. with uh, a child in this lifestyle? Is there anything mm -hmm. that you feel like is more difficult, different, better in terms of off grid and, and raising kids? <sighs> It's so fun to do it with him. Um, I just finished writing a blog post today about, you know, children and livestock, children and farm animals. And this whole, you know, it's the whole thing. It's the off grid. We're on the homestead. We have the animals. We're in the country and we have the multi-generational thing going. This whole thing. It's just all. And we live naturally, sustainably anyways. We really believe in that. And we believe in like taking care of the, of the environment as, as much as we can. And um, so all of that, it's just this whole thing that is so good for him, I think. And it's just so important to me. You know, this is how similar to how my mom raised me. And I got so much out of it. And I just... I'm so grateful to be able to expose him to this way of life and just have it be normal for him. Um, and for him to learn like, yeah, this is how we compost and this is how we help the baby goats nurse their moms. And this is how we take care of our waste in a way that's like good for the earth. And this is why. And so, you know, he does everything with me. So he, he does all the chores and he, he helps me with things and it's just really cool. And I would not say that it's difficult, but I also like, I'm used to it. So I don't, I don't see it as sure. like a difficult thing. I think I see it as an opportunity. Um, you know, I plan to homeschool slash unschool him and I just see it as an opportunity for him to already start learning and participating. Yes. I love how you said, um, 
it's normal for him. And that's the piece that I've also loved with my kids is just yeah. these things that, you know, to the rest of society feel so unconventional and, and sometimes weird. The composting, the thinking mm -hmm. about, you know, what we're putting in the soil, thinking about where our food comes from, getting milk from an udder instead of a jug. Like, right. I love that my kids are like, yeah, that's normal. What, what's wrong with you guys who think it's yeah. in the store? Like, it's yeah. just those little things. I'm like, that's just, that's what I was going for. And it's really rewarding, yeah. like you said. It is, yeah. All right. So as we kind of wrap up here, I think my last question for you, and then I definitely want you to share um, your your website where people can find you. But I'd love to know if you have any advice for someone who is, you know, they're wanting to do something similar, maybe go off grid, maybe downsize and, and find some sort of tiny home. What's your best advice for someone in that situation? Okay. These are two quotes. One of them, I think I came up with one of them. My dad always says to me, my stepdad always says to me is, so the, the one he always says to me is don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Good. Yes. And mine is do what you can with what you have. And I think, um, you know, God willing, if, if it is meant for you, you know, to happen, you know, God will help you do it. He will provide the juice and you just need to be willing to do the work and believe that it can happen. And it's so easy to tell ourselves like, oh, I can't do that. Or I can't do that now. Like, I wanted a deck. I wanted a patio. And I was like, I don't have thousands of dollars to put in a deck. So instead of just like giving up and not having anything, I found rocks on the land and I just like made a patio. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, so it's just just do it, you know, and don't don't think that you can't and just like just start and do a little bit at a time. And again, do what you can with what you have. If you don't have um, a couch, you know, find an old futon. That's what I did. And then like, you'll slowly make it better, you know? So yeah, you don't always have to go out and buy new stuff to make something happen. I think you're such a great living example of that quote. And I, I don't know, just stories like yours inspire me so much. Um, just like, you know, even our situations are different, but just like, okay, how can I get creative and, and how can I make something I already have work or how can I think outside of the box? Like it just is, is so inspiring. So thank you for sharing that. And you are uh, such a great example of, of doing that very thing. Thank you so much. So where can folks find more about you? We're going to drop this in the show notes guys, but just in case you're, you're, you know, listening on the fly and you don't have time to go to the show notes, just tuck this away in your, in your mind. Uh, where's your website and all that good stuff. Yeah. So my website is Morningstar Mama, M A M A. Dot com. So it's morningstarmama.com, but some people try to type in M-O-M-M-A. Yes. I <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good yeah. to know. And then you have sent me a link to an off-grid, your off-grid cabin blog post that gives more details yes. about what we talked about today because there was yep. a lot of good stuff in case you yes. didn't have a chance to write it down, folks. Go check it yes. out there. And you have a guide, I think, as well on your blog that people can get for free. Yes, absolutely. So if you go to my account uh, or my uh, website, uh, up at the very first thing you'll see, it says, you know, subscribe to my newsletter and you'll receive a free, easy off-grid cabin on a budget guide. Um, so that's just a, it's about it's a total of eight pages, but it's about six pages of just down and dirty, like start to finish basically what I have, this cabin awesome. and everything that went into it. Sometimes it just helps so much to see how someone else thought through it. And I think that's, yeah. yeah, it just takes a lot of the scary out of it. Exactly. And it's kind of like a cheat sheet. It's kind of like a, a quick guide. Um, I don't go too into detail, but I do go, I do break everything down. Awesome. Okay, guys, go check that out. Risa, you are so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of your ideas today. Um, yeah, it makes me, I mean, I don't plan to go off grid, but it makes me want to rethink some of our systems and processes and think how we can simplify and get more creative. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. 